Welcome to the March 20th, 2019 Panagorda City Council meeting. Let the record reflect that all city council members and city officials are present. We'll um, stand uh, for the invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord, we acknowledge thee as creator and sustainer of all life in our pursuit of the secular. Help us not to forsake thy sacred. Bless now, we pray this meeting and its members to thy continued service. Amen. 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 Good morning. We have two proclamations on the agenda today. The first of these is a commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, and Councilmember Matthews is going to present this proclamation. Thank you. It's my honor and privilege. <clears throat> City of Punta Gorda proclamation. Whereas, as we observe the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, we reflect with solemn reverence upon the valor of a generation that served with honor and we pay tribute to the more than three million men and women who bravely left their families to serve a world away from everything they knew and everyone they loved. And whereas we remember those who courageously served during more than a decade of combat over air, land, and sea in the challenging terrains of Southeast Asia, where they faced extraordinary and unprecedented dangers, and we will never forget their sacrifices in the name of freedom. And whereas, through the dedication of the Vietnam Wall of Southwest Florida on November 5, 2016, the citizens of Punta Gorda, Charlotte County, and the state of Florida are reminded of the more than 58,000 patriots <coughs> who sacrificed all they had and all they would ever know. And whereas in the reflection of the wall, we see a, the military family members and veterans who carry a pain that may never fade. May they find peace in knowing their loved ones endure, not only in medals and memories, but in the hearts of all Americans who are forever grateful for their service and who pledge to keep faith with those who were wounded and still carry the scars of war, seen and unseen. And whereas the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War is a 13-year program to honor and give thanks to a generation of proud Americans who saw our country through one of the most challenging missions it has ever faced. And whereas throughout this commemoration, let us strive to live up to their example by showing our Vietnam veterans, their families, and all who have served the fullest respect and support. And remember that it is never too late to pay tribute to the men and women who answered the call of duty with courage and valor. Now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, does hereby proclaim May 28, 2012, through November 11, 2025, as the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War throughout the city in accordance with the officially designated national period of observance with a special expression of gratitude to our Vietnam veterans for their service. Passed and duly adopted this 20th day of March 2019, <coughs> Nancy Prefke, Mayor. Um, and accepting will be C.J. Metcalf and Mike Wooster from the Military Heritage Museum. And I would also like to um, invite all Vietnam veterans uh, to attend the event that will be taking place at the brand new Military Heritage Museum on March 29th at 11 a.m. And if you would like information, please see one of these folks over here to attend that. And CJ, would you please come up and accept? Mayor, Council, Karen Smith, I want to give an especial thanks to you all for taking the time to make this a public notice. Many veterans will be receiving a copy of this, and this will be given to them as part of a long overdue tribute to their sacrifices and their service to protect the freedom and liberties of this country. We thank you. And the next 
proclamation is a very exciting one for the the um, Charlotte Warriors JV Cheerleading Squad Day. So if the cheerleading squad can come in here and all their leaders. Come on in and come up here. Over here with me. Um, it, <coughs> so I, I'm as the mayor. Um, it's my honor and privilege to present this proclamation to you. It's a proclamation of the city of Punta Gorda, Florida. Whereas the Charlotte Warriors Junior Varsity Cheerleading Squad's motto is "One Team, One Dream." And whereas on October 28, 2018, the squad performed at Hertz Arena, taking first place and having the highest choreography score out of 60 teams. Way to go. <laughs> um, whereas the Charlotte Warrior Junior Varsity Cheerleading Squad went to Orlando, Florida for regionals on November 23rd, 2018 and placed, again placed first and won a partial bid into the global competition. Wow. Whereas thanks to the community, parents and cheerleaders, enough money was raised to go to nationals in Orlando on December and on December 4th, 2018, the squad took second in the nation. And whereas on January 19, 2019, Global Competition Day, they won second place with an amazing performance. You guys just keep rocking it. <laughs> whereas cheerleader, uh, cheer coordinator Lauren Degeda, head coach Deanne Zaharic. Zaharic, okay, thank you. Uh, assistant coaches Megan Tuck, Jen Hulling, Jessica Parker, Ashley Parker, and Ashley Bacon, and teen mom Heather Brumfield, and these girls worked as a team and a family and made their dreams come true. Now all of their names are listed here. Okay. Do we need to read all the, would you like to read all of their names? So I don't butcher the names. Would one of you like to read all the names? Okay. Okay. <laughs> the names are listed there, so. Okay. We have Haley Branch, Ava Carr, Ariana Centeni, Fiala Coop. Kendall Duggan, Krista Demoleski, Addison Foster, Haley Hewling, Layla Kearns, Emma Keith, Kennedy Levesque, Leila, Le Leah Massey, Brenna Mills, Chloe Mills, Audrey Newberry, Brianna Upstall, Trinity Pearsons, Diamond Pullen, Jalen Reg Registrine, Abby Robinson, Alyssa Scarcella, Kyla Qualls, McKenna Silver, Kylie Vasquez, and Kira Vasquez. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, does hereby proclaim March 20th, 2019, that's today, <laughs> as the Charlotte Warriors JV Cheerleading Squad Day throughout the city and recognizes the outstanding efforts of this group in their pursuit of excellence, passed and duly adopted in a regular session this 20th day of March 2019, City of Punta Gorda, Florida, signed Nancy Prapke, Mayor. And congratulations. Right. And the team is accepting. So everybody, we give it a hand. <laughs> Joe, I think Joe arranged this. Joe. You want to say something? Or somebody like to say something? I know this was a lot of work. All about you girls. Yeah. <laughs> First, Nancy, thank you for allowing us to uh, to recognize the girls with their achievement that they did and, and also the uh, board members of the uh, city. Listen, uh, a little bit about the girls. We didn't talk much about it, but they end up going to Atlantic City, New Jersey for the world, um, and they worked hard. These girls, and it was rain, snow, shine, and whatever. I mean, it was, it was crazy out there. It was, it was cold. Um, they practiced there, they practiced here our, our fields when it was raining and when it was uh, cold, uh, but they, they were so dedicated to what they were wanting to do. Their parents, you gotta give the parents and coaches, it, if it was for the parents and coaches, uh, it, it, it sure wouldn't have happened, but these girls worked really, really hard to get where they where it were, and, uh, and we're so, so proud of them. And I'm proud to say that I'm part of, of this organization, Charlotte Warriors, 
and there's uh, better things to see in, in the future for these guys. So we want to thank everybody. We cannot do it without you guys. Could I get some help from IT, please? My computer's not working. <laughs> so the next item on the agenda is an introduction of board committee member nominees. If there's anyone who is nominated for a board or committee, uh, would you, um, you have, please come to the podium and introduce yourself. <clears throat> okay, so we have to take Gary's laptop or tablet to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> It seems like we all <laughs> having <laughs> tablet issues. Yeah. Okay. I just opened mine up last this morning, that's all. <laughs> okay. Um, seeing that we don't have any, <clears throat> excuse me, um, any nominations um, this morning, we'll move into our public hearing agenda. And we have uh, one, uh, oh, I have to uh, state, uh, there has been an, uh, um, an item that's been withdrawn from the agenda, and that's under uh, new business item 7B, damage prevention vents for mural, that has been um, removed from, from the agenda by the request of the Mural Society. Okay, so we have one quasi-judicial public hearing this morning. Um, I'll let our yes. city attorney introduce this. This is um, a V-04-18 request by Audrey Nicotin, property owner for a variance to the land development regulations pursuant to chapter 26, section 16.10 and section 17.6 Florida of Punta Gorda Code to allow a new single family residence to be constructed in a general single family zoning district, GS-3.5, on a non-conforming lot of record containing 9,042 square feet instead of 9,600 square feet as required by Chapter 26, Section 3.4 G1, Punta Gorda Code, and to allow construction of a new swimming pool, deck and screen enclosure with 15 feet rear yard setbacks at the closest points instead of 20 feet as required per Chapter 26, Section 3.13 D, Punta Gorda Code. This was continued from December 19, 2018. Anyone that is planning on providing any evidence or testimony with respect to this matter, please rise and be sworn by the city clerk at this time. Raise your right hand. <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the <coughs> truth in today's proceedings? I do. I do. Thank you. When you come to the podium, please state your name and indicate you've been sworn. Good morning, Lisa Hannon, zoning official, and I have been sworn. I'd like to enter our staff report into the record by reference in its entirety. This is a non-conforming lot of record and doesn't meet the lot size requirements for the zoning <coughs> district. And as such, uh, considerations can be given for relief for setback requirements for chapter 26, section 17.6, non-conforming lots of record, allowing a new single family residence with an attached pool and enclosure to be constructed on this vacant property. Canal Maintenance has provided an email regarding the condition of the seawall. The seawall appears to be an original seawall, and there are no records that state the cap has been replaced. The wall is rated in good condition. The applicant has submitted a letter from the medical provider outlining the minimal, minimal therapy pool <coughs> size due to the size height of the applicant, which will afford reasonable ADA accommodation. The building division has provided the following formula or the formula for the um, house versus the pool, the angle of repose. And federal ADA and Fair Housing Act require local governments to consider the granting of relief from its zoning and building codes when necessary to afford a person with a disability 
the opportunity to enjoy the use of their property in a similar fashion with a person without such a disability. In order to support a request for a reasonable accommodation under the ADA and FHA, a person with a disability is required to demonstrate that their disability is of the type covered by such federal laws, that the accommodation is needed, and the relationship between the person's disability and the need for the requested accommodation. The supplemental letter from the applicant's medical provider satisfies the criteria justifying the granting of the requested reasonable accommodation. Staff recommends approval of the request <coughs> with um, stated conditions that the property owner sign a hold harmless agreement and have such hold harmless agreement recorded into the public records of Charlotte County. Example verbiage is given in the staff report, but we can clarify that with our legal department as needed. And that the therapy pool is to meet but not exceed the minimum dimensions as outlined by the medical provider, which is a therapy pool of 75 feet in length a therapy pool width of 12 feet and a therapy pool depth of five feet. The Board of Zoning Appeals reheard this request and approved it with a vote of six to one. Are there any questions for Lisa before we have the public hearing? Okay, this is a public hearing. Um, anyone who wishes, um, who's been sworn and wishes to testify, um, you have Please come to the podium. You have three minutes. Uh, if you want to. Do we have any questions? We haven't started a discussion yet. This is a public hearing, so uh, you you could, you're you welcome to come as, as the, are you part of the applicant? Um, you're welcome to come and, and um, discuss this, you know, present something if you have something to present. Yeah. You'll need, do, you'll need to go and you state need to your go. name for the record if you're going to say anything. Let, let me, while she's coming up, remind the City Council that at the last uh, hearing on this, there was um, concern as to whether or not the reasonable accommodation that was requested was um, the minimal necessary to provide for reasonable use of the property. And um, after the last hearing, uh, the uh, <coughs> applicant got some additional information from their medical provider that gave uh, specific uh, dimensions and reasons why the, um, the plans that were provided were necessary for this particular individual's uh, reasonable accommodations based on their disability. So um, I don't know that there's anything that needs to be presented any further for your consideration, mm -hmm. um, but uh, certainly the, the applicant's representative is here to answer any questions you might have. My name is Dee Porter and I have been sworn. I really don't have any additional information to give you other than uh, <coughs> the doctor's letter has been provided and uh, there's been an updated uh, drawing on the survey that, that has been reviewed. Um, Gary? I uh, just have one quick question. Has there been any comment from the neighbors with any problem with, with what we're asking for? Not for to my knowledge. Okay, not to my neither. I just want to. I, I have a question, and that is, um, I don't under, know if this would be covered in the, under the home hold harmless. Um, my concern is for the seawall, and the fact that, um, the, yes, the seawall is in good condition, but since under Hurricane Irma, we've uh, where homes who where they are, um, see their pool cages or pools were closer to the to the seawall. Uh, we had issues with erosion, and we were trying to prevent erosion. And it was costly to prevent erosion to protect the integrity of the of the the pool and, and the home. If we were to have um, the seawall fail, um, my concern would be since the pool is 15 feet away, there could be an issue with erosion again. Would the um, property owner then be uh, uh, responsible for maintaining, for paying for the erosion control. Uh, it would seem like that would be in a reasonable request. That can certainly be added to the hold harmless agreement. <coughs> what I did put in some of the um, example language that the city would not be held responsible for any damage to the deck or the pool should the seawall fail, should the city come in and repair, replace the seawall or the seawall cap. But that certainly can be added. Okay. Okay, thank you. That was my, that was the uh, an issue that 
I felt needed to be. Um, also, the homeowner or lot owner mm -hmm. um, has a statement in the file that states he is willing to reinforce the law as well prior to any problems if if that's deemed necessary. Okay. Lynn? Um, further to your point, uh, Mayor, I, I, I have a concern that this is an original seawall, and um, as soon as they start digging for the pool, it may compromise that seawall. How Do we know, does, does this seawall have tiebacks? I can't answer that question. And, and that could be a potential really major issue because as soon as they start digging in the ground behind the house foundation, I think we're going to possibly have an issue with um, the seawall collapsing from the, the negative gravity from, from digging and, and carving out the hole for the pool, and that concerns me a great deal. Um, I, there, there are other alternatives, and that's my concern. I think there are a couple of possible alternatives, and one of which is to certainly possibly modify the site plan of the house and make the footprint a little bit smaller, and I've said this before, and and I will reiterate that. I, I still think that we could be looking at a possible smaller footprint and moving the pool in slightly so that it would be a little further away from the seawall. Um, or he could possibly put in the, what they call the moving water pool, which is another option, which um, gives you the, the benefit of um, simulation of moving, ongoing moving water where he would not have to continue to do laps. So there are other alternatives and I, and I, don't, I, I really have a problem with this, mostly because of the seawall issue. I'm sympathetic to his medical issue, however, I do have concerns about the seawall. Barry? Could we add language that proactively uh, in construction of the pool that if any needed uh, reinforcement of the seawall to ensure that the integrity is maintained would be the responsibility of the owner of the property? Can we add that kind of language? We could certainly do that, yes. And it would seem to me is that, that with, between their, their architects and our engineer, they would be able to come up with a, uh, a, pre a preventive measure if necessary, and then they would take liability if they, in fact, damaged the seawall during that issue. Is that reasonable? I think it's reasonable. Uh, if, if that's the case, I would approve with that language change. Well, we're for, still on a public hearing. Okay, I'm trying to get out of it. <laughs> I'm, ready, I'm ready to approve it. <laughs> Debbie? Lisa, is the dock already there? There is a dock there. There is a dock there. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, uh, from, uh, do you have a comment? From the standpoint of um, with, with, with with Public Works, do you see any issue with this design in regard to um, the seawall? For the record, Rick Keeney, Director of Public Works. Um, you know, other than the five feet, I mean, there there uh, there was a question: Is there tiebacks there? There should be tiebacks there. I'm, I'm assuming they are. They're there. Uh, tiebacks they vary in range from. You know, there's. This was put in a long time ago, so we have, uh, through our experience, we found tiebacks. You know, back further, some closer, some deeper, some shallower. There is no. Uh, there's no set tieback that that is followed it's it, it can be a variety of things I'm sure the the contractor is going to be aware that they need to be careful of the tiebacks and um, uh, you know there's the five foot difference during Irma did we have problems with pools when those seawalls fell mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. yes we did that five feet in some instances you know made it difficult but mm -hmm. We did our best, and um, we did our best to secure the pools and, and work around it. Yeah, thank you. That's why I, I brought that up because I felt like that needed to be the homeowner's responsibility, and it needed to be stated as such. Yeah, I, I concur with, with, with Gary's changes too. So, um, we're still in a, a public hearing. Is there anyone else that wishes to testify? Do Debbie? we know if he would be amenable to those additions? He's just willing to do whatever he has to do, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I think so we are been. still in a public hearing. Is there anyone else who wishes to uh, um, testify? You have three minutes. Last call. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. There's been a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Would all those 
In favor of closing the public hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Mo move to accept. It's Mel, can I say? Yes. Move to accept uh, VO 418. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve V-04-18. Would, would that include please, the please. Um, specific conditions that were discussed during the City Council's deliberations? Yes. Then I second, yes. Do you have that, Karen? Okay. Um, would all those in favor please signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. The motion carries four to one. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a resolution of the City Council. Yes, and since this is not a public hearing, we do uh, allow for public comments, citizen comments on the resolution. So this would be the time to entertain okay. citizen comments on this item. If there are anyone, if anyone wishes to comment on the the transportation build out study, uh, would you uh, please come to the podium? You have three minutes. I know it's an exciting study. S seeing none, mm -hmm. um, this is a resolution which I'll read by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, adopting the transportation build out study and incorporating the transportation build-out study into the City of Punta Gorda Comprehensive Plan 2040 and providing an effective date. Um, <clears throat> all right, any discussion? This, uh, I find this to be kind of predictable. I think when I, after we've had the, the charrettes last week and we had um, Rick Hall's um, comments relative to this, um, it gave me an opportunity to reflect on, on this plan, and I felt the plan was predictable. And I, maybe that's because I was on the MPO board for a year and, and have um, paid attention to some of these issues, but I thought Rick, Rick brought a creative approach to this, added a creative layer that I think um, is missing from this plan. So I really appreciated his, his insights and in, in how he added things. Um, and so it, it, um, it's necessary that we have this for our comprehensive plan. Um, and I look forward to Rick Hall's um, uh, inputs as we get the, the information back in, in the future from uh, Dover Cole. Because I think that's, that's the, the real, he was actually problem solving. And I thought it was, that was, it's needed, so. Okay. I make a motion okay. for approval. It's well, we have a motion to either. Accept this resolution, is that, would be that the way to say it? Approve the resolution. Approve, 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 approve the motion. resolution, approve. is that what you want us yes. to do? Okay. Second. There's been a motion to, and a second to approve this resolution. Would all those in favor please signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, uh, next we move into the consent agenda. And the first thing I'll ask is, does anyone have any item on the consent agenda that you would like to pull? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'd like to pull D2 and D3. D2 and D3, okay. So. All right, so we're pulling D2 and D3. Any other items? Okay, so um, first thing we'll do is have citizens' comments on agenda items uh, B, C, and D1 on the consent agenda. Um, so if anyone would like to make a co um, comments, you, please yeah, come. The comments would be on all, all of the items on the consent agenda. Oh, all, even including the ones that we're pulling? Yeah. All right. So um, then please come to the podium. You have three minutes. Okay. So since there was not a rush at the podium, so we'll start. The first thing we will do is then um, ask for approval of the consent agenda, consent agenda items without D1, D2 and D3. 
Move approval. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda without D2 and D3. All those, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. All right, so since we have pulled D2 and D3, which are resolutions, um, I'll, read, uh, I'll read the first one, uh, D2, by title only. It's a resolution of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, approving the locally funded agreement with the State of Florida Department of Transportation for State Road 45, US 41, Tamiami Trail, traffic signal and lighting upgrades, authorizing the city manager to enter into the agreement on behalf of the city and providing an effective date. Mitchell, would you like to just okay. introduce uh, this? Yes, uh, so the, the documents that you have before you for this resolution were provided by the Florida Department of Transportation based upon uh, actions that city council took at the October 3rd meeting uh, of last year. Uh, where the city uh, gave, provided direction to city staff to pursue uh, decorative signal mast arm upgrades for the traffic signals uh, at Virginia, or excuse me, Taylor, Virginia, Olympia, and Marion Avenue on US 41 northbound Tamiami Trail. In that, in that documentation that's, that city staff provided at that time, uh, we had estimated that this project would cost <coughs> approximately $63,000 for the, for the upgrades. Um, those figures were uh, derived by staff based on uh, vendor estimates and they were uh, presented to uh, FDOT staff uh, to ensure that they were in line with what, what they were seeing. Um, FDOT's uh, request for local funding match is $43,400, so the actual costs are coming in lower for the capital uh, costs than what, what was initially estimated. So this is the, the, the finish line, as it were, of the, the decision that was made by City Council back in October. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor? Um, at the risk of sounding like I'm being negative, I just think that this is a frivolous expense that we don't need to, to take um, off out of our out of our one percent sales tax program. Um, it, everything that we do it costs a lot of money, and I just think that this is one place we could save a little bit of money for once. We we do a very good job of spending money. We don't do a very good job of of re saving money to put in the reserve funds or any other funds. And, um, and I'm just concerned that this is a want rather than a need. And I, I still stand my ground about my opinion about it back in October. So I, I just want to go on record saying I do not support it. Okay. Other comments? I do. Um, this money is not going to, it doesn't take away from our reserves, it's other 1%, but the that. money that's generated from, from our downtown actually is what keeps us above water. And I think it's very important. If anything, we need to invest more in the historic downtown because especially with all the developments happening in the county, we need to have a very clearly defined, um, really concise historic district. And I think it's very important that we make the historic district look as historic as possible. I think it's very important for our branding process and us really you know, basically supporting our downtown businesses and our downtown business sector. I think it's very important. It has to look like what we say it is. Debbie? I think it's important for cohesiveness. Um, I think you know, I, we, we're trying to brand ourselves as this quaint place, and if we have beautiful lampposts and then all of a sudden we go to standard, um, you know, industrial type ones, we've lost our brand. Really? Um, kind of in the same avenue, since we're uh, in the midst of uh, developing a, um, a major citywide plan, and a lot of it has to do with the accoutrements and the uh, form-based coding that we want, and we, mm -hmm. this seems to be in the in, can, uh, in sync with that type of direction. But I do have one question, is, is if we, uh, because it seemed to be developing as a question in the charrettes, if we were to add an additional uh, two stoplights on uh, 41 over by uh, Rieta Espinade, um, would we be, w who would pay for that for, for 
the traffic lights, et cetera, and then would we be responsible for the upgrades, that type of thing? Um, so just to <laughs> back up from that statement and give a little background for council and, and the general public. Uh, currently, as part of a roadway resurfacing project that is a couple of years out on this segment of US 41, the Florida Department of Transportation is looking at uh, what they call a network signal warrant for Reda Esplanade, both on US 41 southbound and US 41 northbound. Uh, the purpose for that uh, signal warrant is to determine if traffic signalization of those two intersections, intersections is, uh, is appropriate, given the traffic volumes, safety, and other factors. Um, the word network is there because it's not just looking at one intersection, it's looking at the entire ecosystem of downtown and all the signalized intersections which the department controls and to see if the it makes sense to add those signals which add a little bit of delay at those intersections but may actually save delay at other intersections within the network. Um, if they determine that those signals are warranted those costs will be borne by the department for the standard signal arms. If we were, as a city, to want to be consistent and have those decorative upgrades, it would be incumbent on us for a similar local match for that project. Okay, so so getting back to the, you, you, I pretty much expected you to say exactly what you said. So what would be the, in today's dollars, because this is not gonna happen until sometime in the future and we don't know what it is, but in today's dollars, are we looking at to upgrade those to, in conjunction with the others, uh, $10,000, $3, $550,000, whatever that number might be, approximately? Uh, so based on what we have before us today, um, we have $43,400 for four traffic signals, um, we're looking at two traffic signals, probably, a little bit of inflation in the neighborhood of thirty or forty thousand dollars at that point in the future when those signals would be uh, constructed. So certainly within reason, if we go for the big art with the lights on the on the bridge, also it would be just. A, <laughs> okay. I just had, had to make my comment. Sorry, but I, I what I just wanted to Thank have you, a perspective. Gary. You're welcome. Um, yeah, and I, I, to <laughs> the point, I, I think um, you know, in the last meeting we were talking about uh, funds, and I know you all approved paying for the water and sewer for costs for a nonprofit. That, I, you know, um, I was concerned about that. Um, but I think this one is, um, it's, it's so important even in the citywide master plan, we talked about the, the um, historic character of our community. And that's something that the residents in our community have said that's very important to the community and that came out in the polling last week as well. So I feel like this is something that help, is supports the historic character of our community. So, um, Kim? I make a motion for approval. Second. There's been a motion and uh, a second for approving the resolution. Um, would all those in favor please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries four to one. Uh, next is uh, item D3, a resolution which I'll read by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, approving the Transportation on System Post Project Maintenance Agreement with the State of Florida Department of Transportation for State Road 45, US 41, Tamiami Trail. Traffic signal and lighting upgrades, authorizing the City Manager to enter into the agreement on behalf of the City and provide an effective date. Part to the, uh, this is the other part. So you yeah, want to explain the what the because I've had people ask me they're they're both identical. I said right. no, no. One is maintenance and the other one is yes. So the the first part is the is the actual funding for the capital improvement. Mm -hmm. The second, as if as we enter with any um, with any grant funds that we receive from FDOT, we have to have a maintenance agreement. So this is an upgrade. So this is a little bit different, but we're upgrading something on the state system. We have to agree to maintain it in perpetuity. And the cost is FDOT is paying for that. So FDOT is paying for us to maintain the traffic signals. So there's the actual signals are going to be maintained under the, the, the federal funds uh, that, that are passed through the state. Um, what 
we would be maintaining is the actual decorative elements over time, not the signals, just the decorative elements. Other questions for Mitchell? Yeah. Motion for approval. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve this amendment. Would all those in favor please signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 Those opposed? It's my day. <laughs> <laughs> the motion carries four to one. All right, we will now move into the regular agenda. Do, is, are we all okay? Debbie, uh, you talked about a break. Do you need a break now or I'm, do you? I'm, I'm okay. You're okay, okay. So um, we will take citizens' comment on a reg, uh, regular agenda items. We have the budget, uh, award of agreement to Sunland Paving for minor paving and asphalt repair services and award of master agreement to AECOM, technical services and KCCS. Um, a request by the Pickleball Committee to undertake an acoustical study, a request to re remove on-street parking uh, space at Nesbitt and Harborwalk Drive, and a downtown farmer's market. Anyone who wishes to make a comment, uh, please come to the podium. You have three minutes. Good morning. My name is David Ames. I'm a resident at 200 Harbor Walk Drive and a member of the board of directors. Uh, I'm here to speak in favor of removing the space for, on behalf of the 60 unit owners at Harbor Walk. Our problem is that as you come out of the driveway on Harbor Walk Drive to turn left and enter Nesbitt, mm -hmm. that last parking space on the northbound side significantly blocks our view. We have to pull forward almost into Nesbitt Street itself to be able to see beyond the first car. It's a hazard. It's not a harbor walk issue. It's a public safety <coughs> issue because of pedestrians, the bicyclists, and the oncoming traffic. That traffic pattern was set up years ago, and today it Circumstances are different. There's heavier traffic in the area just based on the volume of people in Punta Gorda. The new parking that has been placed near Lashley increases the flow from the right side out of the marina area. Uh, and in general, the, the, the wall is in a new addition that has now created a significant number of pedestrian crossings from the Lashley side across. So as you drive out, or as somebody's coming down the road to enter Lashley, you have the oncoming traffic from both sides. You have the pedestrians trying to cross either Nesbitt or our driveway, Harbor Walk Drive. And your visual area is significantly limited. Plus, the drivers that are coming on, many of them are unfamiliar with the area, the new visitors, they're distracted trying to find parking. It's a problem every day, but it's particularly significant when there's an event at Lashley and during the high season when traffic is, at noontime, that place is always packed for lunch. Uh, it's an issue that affects us, but it affects everybody because the pedestrians and the bicyclists, as well as the visitors, are all in jeopardy. It's in the past we've made the request, and it's been, I understand, turned down because of lack of parking in the area. That has changed. Now 40 spaces have been added up at Lashley. 14 will be available at the wall. We think giving up one for the safety of the public is a reasonable request. Thank you. You're welcome. Good timing. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sheila Yeager. I live on Red Esplanade. And as always, thank you to the council for allowing me to get up here and speak again and again. Um, once upon a time, a long time ago, in an effort to defend the peace and quiet of citizens' homes, those in power in Punta Gorda wrote a noise regulation. That's number 14, and it defined nuisance noises as sounds offensive 
beyond the premises of origin. Then some of Punta Gorda's citizens, probably some of the younger citizens, discovered batteries. And those in power moved to add to a regulation for the park. And that's number 16, a prohibition on loud sound making devices, plainly audible at a distance of 100 feet or more from the device or instrument. And here's th where things get kind of sticky. So neither of those talk about decibel levels, which is basically uh, from acoustics a, a, a physical concept, physics. And when you're talking about human perception, you're talking about psychology. And it actually has to do with how sounds are perceived, the loudness factor. My home is not at 100 feet. It's at 350 feet. And it would be a relief to hear music. Instead, I hear a monotonous, sharp, attention-grabbing, irregular series of pops. And I assure you they are plainly audible and to my all too human ears do not blend in with the unoffensive background sounds of basketball or bird song or children playing or wind in the trees or most road traffic. If you were there at my home and gave it an hour or so, you might call it offensive too, but perhaps not because you can go home and being able to go home not being a captive audience colors perception, which is, again, psychological. Let me be clear. Pickleball players say it isn't loud, and, have repeatedly, and I have repeatedly said this isn't about decibels. I've never alleged anything about decibels. Instead, I've talked about sound quality and the damaging effects of, sound, of noise annoyance, which are more com complicated topics, but more pertinent. There's a letter to the editor that was published in the March 11th Sun, written by someone just a few miles south of here. Quote, we can't seem to be able to understand our primary role is protecting the health of our citizens. What if there were 32 players only 52 feet behind the home of someone with a history of stroke? That someone ended up in the hospital needing three stents, or the neighbor with migraines and can't sleep, but must stay in a room all day with the door closed or someone with chronic pain, depression, and suicidal. Noise can be a serious health risk. This is the situation in Courtside Landings HOA, and it won't stop." Unquote. Well, thank you. Any other <coughs> citizens' comments? OK, then we will proceed with the Budget items. Uh, the first item is the award of, of agreement to Sunland Paving Company of Port Charlotte for minor paving and asphalt repair services. Good morning, Marion. Good morning. Mary for, Marion Pace, procurement manager for the record. And if I may say, the cheerleader squads, not them, but the coaches make me feel very old. When I was treasurer for Pop Warner, they were the cheerleaders. So. <laughs> 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 Okay, moving on to the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Gives us a little perspective. Yes, I'm getting old. Um, yeah, I just better aging. You know, it's kind of mature. Well, yeah. I love you. We're aging. I love you, man. Yes. <laughs> um, the current agreement for the city's uh, minor asphalt repaving services expired in February 2019. Um, that contract was in place for six years. Um, during that, our needs were changing. Um, we were um, negotiating change orders to add different services on to make it more um, workable for our engineering and utilities departments. So basically we have the opportunity when we're going out for a new bid to revise the specs and the scopes and all, all the bid line items so that now um, we feel we've got everything that's going to um, keep them going for the next six years. Um, so with that said, we really could not compare the current bid prices with the previous contract because they're not apples to apples. Um, so we went out for bid, we received <coughs> five responses and um, the lowest bid was uh, Sunland Paving in Port Charlotte. Uh, the agreement will allow for monthly bituminous adjustments on those uh, bituminous components, uh, monthly based on the FDOT bituminous index. The other line items in the contract Will, uh, that are not bituminous will be subjected to an uh, annual increase up to the maximum percentage of 8%. Um, our, we did a volume 
on usage on over the past history of the current contract, and we average at about $80,000 a year in actual spend. But with the new line items, more line items, and putting in our estimated annual quantities, it kind of construed what the estimated annual cost could be, 263000 I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And so if we use every single line item, every single estimated quantity, that's what it could be, and that's why we brought it to council uh, for approval in the event this um, contract exceeded um, city manager's uh, approval authority, then we do have it approved by city council to continue. Um, staff recommends approval of the agreement to Sunland Paving. Any questions for Marion? Thank you for the excellent explanation. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Motion for approval. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the award of agreement to Sunland Paving Company. All in favor, please, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries unanimously. All right, the next one is uh, an award of master agreement to AECOM and KCCS. Um, and again, Marion, it's your show. Marion um, Pace Procurement Manager. 